Good morning everybody. Welcome to today's Harry Edwards Healing Minute. It's Friday the 8th of April and I'm Martin and it's my pleasure to host the Healing Minute again this morning. Thank you very much as always for joining us wherever you are in the world and for sparing a few minutes to contribute to sending healing energies to those that are in need. And then a special thanks to all of your messages. It's a little bit lonely sat here in front of a, a computer screen, isn't it? So it's nice to know that we're part of a community uh, with a common intent. So let's just start the process by allowing the thoughts and responsibilities of our everyday lives to just fade to the back of our minds for a little while and for us to consider ourselves nicely grounded and aware of the higher spheres and of the work that we're doing. So let's allow us to breathe a little more slowly and a little more deeply to signal to our minds and body that we now want to relax physically, mentally and emotionally. Let's feel that relaxation starting at the forehead, releasing any tension there. And for the muscles around the eyes and the face and the jaw, all to relax, releasing any tension down through the throat and the neck and into our shoulders, allowing the shoulders to drop. And for this wave of calmness and relaxation to roll down our body, releasing any tensions in our muscles and tissues. Let us allow anything that we don't need to flow out through our fingertips and toes, go into Mother Earth to be broken down into its elemental forms for reuse. Let's be nice and grounded and open ourselves up to those divine energies and allow them to flow through our chakras to uplift us and to raise our vibrations. Please join me now if you'd like to in the attunement and grounding prayer. We give thanks that we are gathered together today and ask that our homes be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness. Allowing the flow of love and healing to come through us. And as our crown chakra opens, we visualize a column of pure white light filling our bodies. Then feel the balance and harmony within our body 
as the earth energy rises up through the soles of our feet and our base chakra. Let us feel connected to the universal source of pure and unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. Now the sanctuary prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, let us pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. That is such a lovely prayer, isn't it? So now we're at the healing minute. And we ask that all those people whose names are in the distant healing folder in the chapel at the sanctuary may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family and friends and the loved ones who requested the distant healing for them. And we ask that that healing request be extended to everybody who's on a healing list at a healing centre up and down the country or around the world. And that all those who are in need by sending out a request, even if it's just through their inner thoughts, that they will receive the healing that they're needing. Let it be extended also to the animal kingdom, that they too may share in the benefit. And as the healing reaches each and every one of them, we ask that they will feel an improvement in their condition, and especially a release of any pain or discomfort, leaving them to feel calm and prepared and more optimistic about the future. So let's just turn the music down now for a few minutes, well for one minute. As we open our channels, linking together each one of us here, and there are 29 of us at the moment, linking together and linking with the healing angels, asking that that healing energy now be channeled to all of those people. Open your chakras and send out that intent. Thank you, everybody. And our special thanks, of course, to our friends in spirit for providing that healing energy. Thank you very much, everybody.
We have a couple of notices. Uh, your host tomorrow will be Bev, so please join her tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, and then on Sunday, uh, the 10th of April at 7.30 in the evening, we have another uh, Healing For You session with Alan Moore, and that's on Facebook and uh, hopefully on Zoom. Uh, but they're not sure about the Zoom, so to be safe, you might want to start on Facebook. Then the following day on Monday, the 11th of April at 7.30, we have another in our series of conversations with healers and our guest uh, this week or that evening will be uh, our good friend from the Healing Trust, Jennifer Jones, who's chair of trustees there. She'll be being uh, chatting with um, Alison uh, McGuinney, uh, one of our directors at the sanctuary who is uh, in the interviewing chair. So do join them there. Um, I think that's also on Facebook and Zoom. Um, we have a one day retreat on Wednesday the 13th of April so if you'd like to take a step out of the hurly-burly of everyday life um, please join us at the sanctuary we still have a couple of slots spare for that so I've got um, a reading for you this morning a short reading um, which I'm going to take from a book called The Secret Life of Plants by Peter Tomkins and Christopher Bird um, you may have heard about this book. It was published originally in the 1970s and it caused quite a, quite a stir at the time and has been the subject of much debate and controversy since. Um, the premise of the book is that these, the uh, authors felt they had stumbled across evidence that plants have sentience. In other words, they have feelings. Um, and of course, when this was... Uh, publicized the uh, conventional scientists and botanists thought this was a load of complete tosh uh, and the argument has continued ever since uh, but the book itself is extremely interesting and I'm going to read you a short section it is it is a long book it's 400 pages uh, I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs but I, I hope that they still have some meaning so it's in chapter one and it's just explaining um, how they tumbled across the, the discoveries that they made. The gentleman who made the discovery was somebody called Mr. Baxter. The adventure started in 1966. Baxter had been up all night in his school for polygraph examiners, where he teaches the art of lie detection to policemen and security agents from all over the world. On impulse, he decided to attach the electrodes of one of the lie detectors to the leaf of his plant. Now you'll know this plant better than I am sure. It's Dracaenia. Is it Dracaenia? The Dracaenia is a tropical plant similar to a palm tree with large leaves and a dense, dense cluster of small flowers. And it is known as the dragon tree because of the popular myth that its resin yields dragon's blood. Baxter was curious to see if the leaf would be affected by water poured on its roots, and if so, how and how soon. As the plant thirstily sucked up water up its stem, the, gal the lie detector, to Baxter's surprise, did not indicate less resistance, as might have been expected by the greater electrical conductivity of the water in the plant. On the contrary, the machine tended in the opposite direction, with a lot of sawtooth motion on the tracing. Baxter's dragon tree, to his absolute amazement, was giving him a reaction very similar to that of a human being experiencing an emotional stimulus of short duration. Could the plant be displaying emotion? What happened to Baxter in the next 10 minutes was to revolutionize his life. The most effective way to trigger in a human being a reaction strong enough to make the lie detector move is to threaten his or her well-being. So Baxter decided to do just that to the plant. He dunked a leaf of the draconia, draconia in a cup of hot coffee, but there was no reaction on the machine. Baxter studied the problem for several minutes, then decided a stronger threat was needed he would burn the actual leaf to which the electrodes were attached. The instant he got the picture of a flame in his mind, and before he could move for a match, 
there was a dramatic change in the tracing pattern on the graph in the form of a prolonged upward sweep of the recording pen. Baxter himself had not moved, either towards the plant or towards the recording machine. Could the plant have been reading his mind? When Baxter left the room and returned with some matches, he found another sudden surge had registered on the chart, evidently caused by his determination to carry out the threat of burning the leaf. Reluctantly, he set about doing so, and this time there was another peak on the graph. Later, he went through the motions of pretending he would burn the leaf, but there was no reaction whatsoever. The plant appeared to be able to differentiate between real and pretended intent. Baxter felt like running into the street and shouting to the world, plants can think. Instead, he plunged himself into the most meticulous investigations of this phenomena, phenomena in order to establish just how the plant was reacting to his thoughts and through what medium. His first move was to make sure he'd not overlooked any logical explanation. Was there something extraordinary about the plant or about him or about the instrument he was using? But when he and his collaborators, using other plants and other instruments in other locations all over the country, were able to make similar observations, the matter warranted further study. More than 25 different varieties of plants and fruits were tested, and the observations each similar to the first. These were explosive connotations for science, as up until now the debate between scientists and parapsychologists on the existence of ESP, extrasensory perception, has been quite fierce, largely because of the difficulty in establishing when an an ESP phenomena is occurring. Baxter first considered his plant's capacity for picking up his intentions to be some form of ESP. ESP is held to mean perception above and beyond varieties of the established five sensory perceptions touch, sight, sound, smell and taste. As plants have none of these Botanists, botanists since Darwin's time have never credited them with their nervous system and Baxter concluded that the perceiving sense must be something else. This led him to speculate that the five senses in humans might be limiting factors, overlying a more primary perception, possibly common to all nature. Maybe plants see better without eyes. So that's the interesting conclusion there, that he wondered if plants have a more primary perception possibly common to all nature. So that's where the possible link with our work comes in. Is there another sense, a sixth sense, that explains what we do as well, that might also explain why plants seem to be able to pick up our emotions and intentions. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it thought provoking. Um, as I say, the book has been debunked over the years and conventional science has uh, derided it. But the facts remain that there seemed to be something going on that we can't explain. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave you with this lovely music to prepare yourself for a return to everyday life. Uh, I'm using again this morning music for relaxation by Chapman and Miles. I got this from um, the Sanctuary, so it's on sale there if you'd like it. I'm sure it's available on um, the internet. Music for relaxation. So I'll just put you back in the company of Harry Edwards and his cheerful smiling face. Turn the music up. give you a chance to collect your thoughts now, grounding yourself, standing under that spring water shower to allow yourself to be refreshed and cleansed, washing away anything you don't need physically or 
any mental or emotional thoughts that are not helping you, let them all be washed away, leaving you clean and refreshed. Let's close our chakras now, one by one, and bring our aura in close to our physical bodies. And now let's wrap ourselves in a robe of protection. Totally protected and safe. Grounded and tuned. Balanced and healed. Ready for the day. Thank you for joining us this morning, everybody. It's been a pleasure to work with you. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.